Well, today I'm along the McCullumy River up in the foothills of the Sierras, and I'm here with, uh, with Cody. There you can see Cody along the side right there. And my daughter, Brenda, is also with me. And we're headed down to that rock that's in the river. You can see downstream. I'll zoom in a little bit. And our intention is to go to that rock and see if we can find some gold that was deposited there many, many years ago in some holes at the top of the rock. In fact, if we do find some gold, I can say with some certainty that it was deposited there in 1862 during the time of a massive flood. They came down this river and most of Northern California. So we're sitting up on top of the big rock now. There's Brenda, She's helping me out today. And here's the McCullumy River. It's still relatively early in the day, so we've got some big shadows. But the temperature is just about perfect. Let me show you what we're doing. Here's the hole. This is where we're expecting, or hoping at least, to find some gold down at the bottom of this. I'm using a suction device to get the gravel out because it's too far down there just to, uh, to reach and scoop it up. So that's one of the holes. And I'll swing around here. Excuse my feet. It's a very cramped, difficult place to work. Here's the other hole. I'll move this out of the way. And you can see it goes down there pretty far. We've uh, suctioned out almost all of the water for this particular hole already. And I'm going to drop my suction device down in there. And you can see how far down it goes. And I've modified this suction device. I bought this commercially at one time, a uh, long time ago. And I never really liked the way it worked before. It was sort of cumbersome and had a big hose attached to it that would lead over to a bucket where your, your gravel would end up but uh, just didn't seem to, uh, to work that well. So anyhow, I've modified this. I've uh, taken most of the parts off, and now it's just a, a great big suction tube. Here's another tool that I brought along with me. It's a simple kitchen variety uh, grabbing tool to extend your reach. So in this particular hole situation, there might be very large rocks down in this hole that would uh, prevent the suction device from working properly. So I can reach down and grab the larger rocks with this tool and pull them up. Well, we finished sucking up all the, the gravel and the sand from these two boreholes on the top of this big rock. And we can look down and see there's just a little bit of water left in the bottom of that one. Same thing with this one. It goes down there pretty deep, more than an arm's length. So it'll be interesting to pan this out and see if, in fact, we get any gold. Before showing you the results of what we panned out, let me briefly show you a little more detail concerning the modifications I made to the hand sluice. These are the parts that were removed from the system. The only main parts still used were the suction tube mechanism itself and one check valve. The only thing I added to the modified device was anti-slip tape. This was done to allow the top and bottom of the tube to be held without slipping as the two sections were slightly twisted and pulled apart. The contents of the tube would then be poured into a conveniently positioned bucket. With only one quart of material removed from the holes, we didn't expect to find much. However, what we did find helped to confirm one theory, but it disproved another assumption that I had made. First, what it did support was the theory that whirlpool action above deep holes in bedrock does tend to trap heavy objects. These lead split-shot sinkers are clear evidence of that, especially because so many of them were found in such a small space. However, these same sinkers disproved the assumption 
that these holes were only underwater during the Great Flood of 1862. This is because the first written mention of split-shot sinkers was not until 1889. Now it's possible that split-shot sinkers were used as far back as 1862, but that's unlikely. In fact, the sinkers found in these holes showed different amounts of wear. This indicates that they were deposited during different floods over a long period of time. And based on flood records, the last major flooding that may have covered this rock was 32 years ago in 1986. In the small sample of gravel that we collected, we only found a very small speck of gold and four small pieces of garnet. We didn't find the pot of gold we were hoping for, but we still all had a great adventure together on the river. Thanks for watching and good luck in your own adventures.